Hey my loves, welcome to my channel, Chantal Gerardi here. Thank you so much for tuning into this video and watching it, I really do appreciate it. Today we have a faith-based video. Um, we are going to be continuing on with the Women in the Bible series. I know I had left it for quite a bit of time, but that was not intentional, but we're back and I have such an exciting story to tell you guys and I hope you guys just get the lessons that I got and I was like, wow. Um, Sorry for the lighting as well. The sun is literally dipping in and out. But um, anyway, um, today we are going to be speaking about Martha. You guys literally might have seen it from the heading on this video. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about Martha. She's such a remarkable woman and I cannot wait to share with you um, the lessons that I got from Martha. Personally, I'll do more than support your dreams, baby. Get you and me. It's time to boss up. Fix your credit, girl, get at it, get your bag up Hit that gym and get back fine Go get that degree, go girl, focus on me So today we're going to be um, discussing Martha Martha is found in Luke and in John and those are the two chapters that I'm going to be reading from. If you see me looking down, please, I do apologize. I'll be looking at my Bible and my notes so that I don't forget anything. Um, but a brief background on Martha is that Martha was, um, she was Mary's sister. She was the older of the two and she also had a brother, Lazarus. Um, Martha was a very passionate human being. She was very, um, zealous she was a very hospitable person in nature and she did everything that she did she did it with conviction so the first lesson that we get from martha is in luke what happens is jesus visits their town and martha obviously being such a hospitable person she opens up her home to jesus so the lord and savior is there she's busy preparing she's be busy making them feel comfortable preparing meals pre making sure that him and his disciples are well taken care of so martha all was always welcoming she was a very gracious host she was always working to make sure everyone was comfortable from what we can see and what we can take from the verses um but there is a teachable moment in martha's um story she was always working even if it was in the background she was always working so there are two teachable moments in luke the first one was happened when she was she had welcomed Jesus into her home and she saw that Mary had decided to go and actually spend time with Jesus while she was working. She felt that Mary should have been at the background with her working with her as well. So she went to Jesus and cried to him and said, Lord, look at Mary. She's just sitting there. She's not helping me be a good host. Please let her know or please tell her to come and work with me in the back. And Jesus gently reminded her that we worry about so many things we worry about what we're doing right what we're doing wrong how to welcome people but sometimes we only need to worry about a few things and sometimes only one thing and that is him so in this moment it just teaches us to be very still and to know that when we are in the presence of god when we are in the presence of jesus Everything else is noise. Everything else does not matter. Everything else becomes secondary. Mary taught her that when you have an opportunity opportunity to be in the presence of the Lord, you do not take it for granted. You jump at it. You spend time with him. So this is a moment where you can learn that although we want to be doing so many things to make sure that God is accepting of us or is welcome, he doesn't care about everything. He doesn't care about any of that. He wants us as is. That's why we say God's grace is unearned, unmerited, and unfavored. It's because we can't earn it. Even if we do good works, even if we do anything, God's love, God's grace, God's blessings come because of his grace, not because of our doings or how we have earned it. So Martha learned this lesson, and I think that it is a valuable lesson for us to learn that we do not have to perform. We do not have to put on a grand performance or gestures just to get the approval or the time with God. He is willing to just spend time with us as we are. And he's more than welcoming to us in whatever state that we're in. So this is a lesson that you can learn. Let me just read from the Bible. Um, You will go to Luke 
10 verse 38. While Jesus and his followers were traveling, he went into a town and a woman named Martha let him stay at her house. She had a sister named Mary. Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet and listening to him teach. But her sister Martha was busy doing all the work that had to be done. Martha went in and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you are getting worried and upset about too many things. Only one thing is important. Mary has made the right choice and it will never be taken away from her. So Mary decided to spend time and to learn from God. And sometimes even though we think we need to do 10 or several things for us to actually be ready to welcome God into our lives. We really don't. He is just, he just wants us and our hearts open and receptive to listening and learning from him. So that was the first lesson that I learned from Martha. The second one from th this um, verse was that sometimes people will leave us to do all the work and that's perfectly fine. We don't know the plans that God has for us we don't know what he's planning for us in the future in the next five seconds and sometimes even if we do agree that we are going to do something and somebody and that person doesn't come through do not condemn them do not feel anger towards them they are doing what they need to do for their journey but you should continue on with the work even though God was teaching and people were learning and listening and Mary was there with him at his feet. The work that Martha was doing still needed to be done. There was still work and someone had to do it. And Martha was the one who had to do it. Her hospitality, her spirit of welcoming and being a gracious host, hostess was still very vital. Even though we, needed, we need to be still in some moments, we still need to put in the work. And that was a lesson that um, I think we can all learn, especially in these times where we feel like, oh, we need teammates to do ABC, or if we even agree with people that we're going to do ABC, but then they don't always fall through. And we always feel so betrayed. We feel left alone. We feel um, like people didn't keep their end of the bargain, but the work needs to continue. So we move, literally. We still need to do the work that needs to be done. So those are the two uh, lessons that I learned from the chapter Luke and you guys can read more on it if you have any other revelations that you get from this please leave them in the comment section down below I would still love to learn and to get more from um, the word that God is teaching us so that was the first the second one we now go to John we go to John ver um, John 11 and in this lesson the lesson is trusting faith so Lazarus had died, unfortunately, and he was in the tomb for four days. So when Jesus then came, um, he was already dead for four days. Martha went out to meet him. And Martha said to God, say to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. So let me just read from that, ver from that chapter. There was a man named Lazarus who was sick. He lived in the town of Bethany, where Mary and his sister Martha lived. Mary is the same woman who put perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. Mary's brother was Lazarus, the man who was now sick. So Mary and Martha sent someone to tell Jesus, Lord, your dear friend Lazarus is sick. When Jesus heard this, he said, the end of the sickness will not be dead. No, this sickness is for the glory of God. This has happened to bring glory to the Son of God. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days and then said to his followers, we should go back to Judea. They answered, but teacher, those Jews that tried to stone you to death, that was only a short time ago. Now you want to go back there. Jesus answered, there are 12 hours of light in the day. Whoever walks in the day will not stumble and fall because they can see with the light from the sun. So that is a background of just the relationship that God had with Martha. And then we go to chapter 2 verse 17. Jesus arrived in Bethany and found that Lazarus had already been dead and in the to tomb for four days. Bethany was about two miles from Jerusalem. Many Jews had come to see Martha and Mary. They came to comfort them about their brother Lazarus. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to greet him. But Mary stayed home. 
Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you anything you ask. Jesus said, your brother will rise and he will live again. Martha answered, I know that he will rise to live again at the time of the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. I am life. Everyone who believes in me will have life even if they die. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never really die. Martha, do you believe this? Martha answered, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You are the one who is coming to the world. So in this time of tragedy, I feel like everyone knows that when you're mourning, you don't leave the house because people, mourners are gathering to mourn with you and you're supposed to be in the house and you're supposed to be showing your grief. But when Martha heard that Jesus was back, she went out to meet him. Mary stayed at home. Regardless of everyone who was at home to mourn with them, Martha had so much conviction and so much trusting faith. She went to Jesus and said, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, you are the son of God and he will do anything you ask of him. That was trusting faith. That faith was unshakable, unmovable. It was powerful. It resurrected her brother. I don't know if we actually grasp just how amazing this is. Like, she had so much faith in the dead that Jesus would bring it back to life and Jesus brought it back to life. Digest, digest guys. I'm so excited, I'm getting goosebumps. But this is so teachable. How many things in our lives do we literally say, oh, this is never gonna happen, this is never going to work. Those are dead things. But if you have trusting faith and conviction in who God is, in who his son is and the power that he has, that he is the beginning and the end. He is life. He is love. And he has the power to bring any dead thing into your life back to life. That he has the power to resurrect that dead business, that dead relationship, that dead feeling that you have, that hopelessness, that God can resurrect that and he can do it just like that. You need to have the faith to meet him, to move from that situation that you're in. Even though you're in a place of grieving, you're in a place of mourning, you're in a place of sadness. You move, you take yourself, you wake up and you go out to meet God and you tell him, God, anything I'll ask of you, you will do. I feel like we are so filled with doubt that we don't actually realize the power that we have that Jesus has bestowed on us, guys. His grace is unearned unmerited, unfavored. We can get it. Literally, we can get it all. And we just need to have that faith that says, I will meet him. I will meet him where he is and I will tell him that God, please resurrect this. Bring this situation back to life. And that is what Martha did and Lazarus was brought back to life. So this is such a teachable moment because we have so many things in our lives that may be going wrong and we battle with sadness and anxi anxiety and worry and just depression because we do not have that trusting faith that God can bring this back. Whether it be a lost exam, whether it be a lost opportunity, whether it be a business that is just sinking, whether it just be our spirits that are low or dead. We need to wake up. We need to get out of that bed. We need to bath. We need to meet God at our point of need. He will meet us at our point of need. We just need to have that faith that he can resurrect, that he can bring back to life what no one else can. And I feel that we lack, I lack that sometimes where I feel like, gosh, I worry so much as if I have the power to bring things back to life. No, I don't. God has. And I need to trust him as my source. Like my friend Elsie always says, God is your source. And God is your source of everything. So you need to have that trusting faith in whatever you do, that God will meet you at your point of need, that God will resurrect and bring back to life those things that you thought were dead. So just have that faith in God. Those were the two lessons, or three actually, that I learned from Martha. So remarkable because 
the power of life and death is in the hands of he that we cry out to, that we pray to, that we praise and we worship and he can do for us what he did for Martha and Lazarus. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you had any other lessons that you have um, learned from just studying Martha's story, please let me know. Every time that I read them, I always find something else and I'm like, wow, this is so amazing. I missed that the first time that I read it and now it's just there for me to see and it goes with what is happening in my life and at that moment and I'm just so grateful. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, like, comment, share with your friends and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video once again. Um, until the next one, guys, love and light and be kind to one another.